iPadOS 26 is finally here. The public beta is out now, and many users are already trying it. If you're one of those people who want the iPad to behave more like a Mac, this is the update you've been waiting for. With iPadOS 26, Apple is pushing the iPad even closer to becoming a true productivity tool. It's not just about playing games or watching videos anymore. This update brings big changes that can help you work faster, multitask better, and use the iPad in ways that weren't possible before. One of the biggest updates is multitasking. If you've used a Mac, the new system might feel familiar. But don't worry it still looks and works like an iPad. When you first install iPadOS 26, you'll be asked if you want to keep using full screen apps or switch to the new multitasking setup. This means you have a choice. You're not forced to use the new system if you're comfortable with the old one. That's good news for people who just want a simple experience, like kids or casual users. But if you want more flexibility, the new system is definitely worth trying. The new multitasking is all about freedom. You can now move windows around and resize them however you want. No more snapping to fixed sizes or getting stuck in awkward layouts. You just grab the corner of any window and stretch it. You can place windows anywhere on the screen. This makes the iPad feel more like a real computer. You can finally use it like a MacBook if you want to. You can also go back to full apps anytime. It's all about giving you the option to use what works best for you. There's also a new multitasking icon in Control Center. When you tap it, you can switch between the new multitasking system and the old stage manager. If you hold down the icon, more options appear. You can quickly move between multitasking styles. Apple didn't remove stage manager completely, but the new system seems to be the one they want users to move toward. It's more flexible and easier to use. Another thing you'll notice right away are the traffic light buttons. These are the same red, yellow, and green dots that you see on a Mac window. They're now on iPad windows too. You can use them to close, minimize, or expand your app windows. And if you press and hold the green dot, you'll see quick tiling options. You can instantly switch to split view, three vertical windows, or a four square layout. These layouts are resizable to it's all very fast and easy. If you're used to using these controls on a Mac, they'll feel right at home. There's also a new menu bar that appears when you're using the new windowing system. At first glance it might not look like much, but it can be powerful as with pro apps some apps already take advantage of it. For example Adobe's creative tools can show hidden features through this menu. It's also a great way to learn keyboard shortcuts. You can click on a menu and see which keys to press for different actions. Right now, not every app supports it, but that will likely change as more developers update their software. Apple also changed the iPad's cursor instead of the round dot we had before. There's now a traditional arrow. This makes it easier to click small buttons and drag things. Precisely, it feels more like using a Mac mouse or trackpad. This is one of those changes that may seem small but makes a big difference over time. For people who like using a keyboard and mouse with their iPad, this is a welcome update. There's also a new way to switch between apps. It's called Expose View. Instead of swiping like before, you now get a cleaner layout of all your open apps and windows. It's more organized and looks a lot like Mac OS. You can see everything at once and pick what you want to jump into. However, there are some things that may feel different. For example, if you have two apps open and then switch to a full screen app, the iPad won't remember your two app layout. It just shows the new app on top. This can be a bit annoying for some users. If you liked the way Stage Manager kept your app pairs together, you might find this frustrating. But again, you can still use Stage Manager if that works better for your needs. Apple is trying to find the right balance between freedom and simplicity. Some users want a more desktop-like experience. Others just want the iPad to stay simple. The good news is that iPadOS 26 gives you both. You can pick the setup that works for you. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. And that's actually a smart move. Now let's talk about the Files app. It's been improved a lot. You can now color code folders and even add emojis to them. This makes it easier to organize your stuff. You also get a new list view, resizable columns and collapsible folders. It's still not exactly like the Mac Finder, but it's getting close. You can also choose which app opens certain file types. For example, you can tell your iPad to always open audio files in a specific music app. This level of control is something users have wanted for a long time. Another useful upgrade is the ability to put folders directly on the dock. This means you can get to your most used files faster. But there's one small issue. When you put a folder in the dock and start adding files to it, the icon changes. Instead of showing a folder, it shows a stack of files. On the Mac, you can switch this back to a clean folder icon. But on the iPad you can't. It's not a big deal. But some people might find it messy. It's a small design flaw in an otherwise great update. The preview app also comes to the iPad. This app has been a staple on the Mac for years. Now you can use it on iPad to view and edit PDFs and images. And if you have an Apple Pencil it becomes even more useful. You can mark things up, sign documents, and highlight text easily. It's a much better option than relying on third-party apps. For students, 
professionals, or anyone who works with files often, this is a great improvement. One of the biggest improvements to the overall experience is background task handling. In the past, if you were transferring a big file or exporting a video, the iPad would lock up. You had to wait for the task to finish. Now these tasks run in the background. You can keep working without any slowdown. This makes the iPad feel more like a proper computer. It's not just about having apps. Open it's about being able to do real work without delays. All of these changes are adding up to something big. The iPad is turning into a hybrid machine. It's no longer just a simple tablet. It's becoming a real alternative to a laptop. You still get the touchscreen. You still get the fun and ease of use. But now, you also get power and flexibility. Some features from iOS 26 are also coming to iPadOS. One of them is the new Games app. This helps users find their games more easily. It keeps track of your game history and even shows what your friends are playing. For parents, this is helpful too. You can see what your kids are doing and what they've downloaded. Live translation is another feature that makes its way to the iPad. It works in messages, FaceTime, and even the phone app. Yes, there's now a phone app on the iPad. You can manage your calls and translate conversations in real time. This is a big step forward for people who travel or work internationally. Another, the thing you'll notice is the design. Apple has added the new liquid glass effect across IPA DOS 26. This visual style is shared with iOS 26 and Mac OS. It makes the interface look more modern and smooth. Everything feels connected. The transitions are cleaner, the shadows are softer, and the overall feel is just more polished. It may not change how the iPad works, but it definitely changes how it feels. In short, iPad OS 26 is the biggest step yet toward making the iPad feel like a Mac, but the best part is that it doesn't force you to use it that way. You get to choose. You can stick with full screen apps, or you can open up five windows at once. You can use the dock, the menu bar, the new cursor or not, it's up to you. Apple finally gave us control. And that's what makes this update exciting.